Welcome, Tiny Hands Big Dreams, here with the controversial conversation from our homestead off-grid in southern Ecuador. We talked a bit about um, before, is it is it time to, to pull up roots and move somewhere? It is where you're, you're staying good? There were some issues there. One thing that we didn't get into that a lot of people ask about is children. Can we broach the subject? We talked about it a bit. A little bit. It is a large topic. And we get a lot of like, oh... I really like want to do that or I feel we should, but the children, oh, but the children, and almost, it almost comes off as an excuse. And no, I, I don't think it is at all, personally. I, I don't think it's an excuse. Um, I, I, a reason to not think about what might be better and to simply stay where you are because the children. Yeah. Well, I see it slightly differently, I guess. I see it more of the, um, it is such an unknown, and there's there's a lot of backlash in the world about how you raise your children. Mm. There is a lot of push to mainstream children in school, in um, society, in socialization, in everything. Um, and to pull up the roots of the child and transplant them to somewhere new with a completely different culture, potentially language, um, all of those things, that's going to be frowned upon. I have been frowned upon. Yes, yes. So I don't even know if it's as much an excuse as like a legitimate um, societal pressure. pressure. Yeah, I get that. I, I definitely have felt that. We got, and, and maybe as, as part impromptu for this conversation, a beautiful email. Yes. Um, one of the, the joys of, of what we do, uh, to date we have made zero monies. No monies. <laughs> we have done this all for free, so enjoy. Um, one of the joys we get is interacting with random people all over the world uh, who comment on our videos and occasionally send an email. Um, and a few who have come and visited. And we got, I want to say, the most beautiful email we have ever received. Um, from uh, Sharaf in Pakistan. Sharaf. Hello. Here's the gorgeous view. You mentioned <laughs> it in your email. Um, I'll give it to you again. Uh, and it it was it was emotionally moving. And he talked about uh, he was sort of uh, inspired by us. And that gets into well, inspired by by the things we're doing, um, which are hard. They yeah. are difficult. And and part of that is is the children. Yeah. Um, why do we do it? And we've been told that we're we're selfish. Yeah, I, I got into a bit of a debate. Started out nicely, ended poorly. Um, on Facebook, of all places, which that's how most things go there. Um, talking about socialization of children. So, a little bit of background, I guess, is important. I was homeschooled. I was homeschooled until 11, 12. And then I went to a teeny tiny private school. The teeniest, tiniest private school that has ever existed. 18 students. So I don't even know if we call it school. It's a group. It's, it's so small. <laughs> it was great. Lots of experiences. All of that. Um, and then I went to public high school. And that was... That was the thing. Um, so I have the experience of kind of all of it at different ages. Sure. Um, I have the experience of being an only child and being raised mostly around adults. I had more adult friends than children friends. And so did I. Being homeschooled, that's a big part of... Yeah. Um, I mean, I had friends my age or around my age, but um, one of the things that my mom always said was that I was more capable of speaking to adults than most kids my age. There's a large mosquito I'm trying to eat you. Mm, I do not enjoy. <laughs> so, it is. It exists. <laughs> And that's that's something, um, the, the debate uh, on there's, the Facebook. There's a lot of parents that will insist um, that, oh, well, children have to be around other children. Yeah, and that they was, learn from other that children. That was the debate that I had. They're very passionate. Um, they're talking about socialization and how they need to be around peers. Like, ah! I have spent many a, a play date um, with my son uh, when he was small, going to places that are, are very large playgrounds, indoors, with slides and things and stuff. And I've watched the other children. 
I don't know that he learns anything from them. Um, many of them are gross. They're mean. <laughs> they have poor manners. They were not taught right by their parents to begin with. They do not play well with others. They don't share. Um, not a lot of redeeming features. Being around adults, you learn uh, a, a better skill set. Do you ever go to school and your teacher is a child and you are trying to learn something from them? Well, no. You're your professor is, is older, is experienced, has more knowledge. That helps bring you up. That's the entire point of that. It was an interesting thing that I... It, usually school is the only time in your entire life that you will be put in situations with only your same age peers. Yes. The rest of the time of your entire life, you are going to be around all ages of people. And you're going to need to interact with them appropriately. Yes. That's just that's so, the rest of life. That makes it the odd, the odd character. But time. yet, as a homeschool kid, the only thing that people could ever say is, "Well, what about like the social skills?" And I'm, like, I'm fine. I can socialize. Do I like socializing? Not particularly. That's a personal thing. That has nothing to do with being homeschooled. <laughs> people always like to bring that. Well, but you don't like being social. That's just a personality. Um, <laughs> I know lots of people who are homeschooled who are very social and very outgoing and have I don't know, all the friends of all the ages, um, jobs, travel, everything. So um, It's just not... I just don't think it's as important as people seem to put value on. Yeah, I... I there, there was even some... some there's a lot of people very opinionated about what children should do, and that's the only way children can, can be raised. They must have this, and they must have this. And typically that's from a U.S. perspective. Yes. Because, man, when you get out in the world, it's just not the same. So if, you, if there's pictures, if you put them on the internet in the U.S. of a child doing some sort of work, helping with the garden, vacuuming, um... <laughs> You know, around the house, and that would just be considered like a normal part of the family has to then yeah. take care of things. Oh, um, you'll get very angry people. Yeah. You know, children must be allowed to play, and they must have plastic toys that make noise and things, and they they shouldn't have to any responsibilities or be taught anything. And then they just run amok like a a rodent. <laughs> Occasionally, they act like that, but yeah. And they grow up not a ton better sometimes. Um, but let, let let's talk about so what we're doing is way out like well there's so there's the moving to a different country aspect sure which i've talked to a lot of people who are um i, I think there's a a bit of a wave of younger families you know with, with elementary school age kids wanting to move <laughs> shake, to shake the camera um, take my arms off of it and i've gotten a few people asking like oh what about what about <laughs> Like that's that's a brave new world, yeah. And it can be difficult to navigate. Um, not just the you know what do we do as far as school or socialization, all those things, but the actual like what does life look like there with young kids? Yeah. And like yeah. it kind of just looks like whatever you want it to look like. So young children adapt very easily to whatever life is, and in different places in the world, you will watch young children. There's some. Um, I remember watching ones in Thailand, Indonesia. They grow up uh, on houses over the water. They they eat fish. They they that's just sort of how they live. They don't think that that's weird. Children from America would have a very hard time of adapting, but they didn't grow up that way. So it's simply some of it's how you grow up is is you accept that is is how you live. Yeah. But there's there's a benefit to moving. And there's, there's good research on that. Um, you're supposed to move, um, I think, at least twice before uh, puberty, um, teenage years with children. It really helps them adapt to, to learn, to make new friends, to, to overcome situations, to accept new things. Otherwise, if you stay in one place your whole life, you, you aren't as accepting of different ways, cultures. You, you have to yeah. have it your way. Um, sailboats, where it's always in. I, I always wanted to sail around the world. There's a lot of children of people who have done that, and the stories they tell are fantastical. 
they do very well. Those children uh, raised without a school, on a boat, randomly in different countries, languages they don't speak, playing with children that they, they don't even know how to say their name. And they grow up that way, and they go on to be uh, uh, statistically incredibly successful. Um, they go on to very prestigious jobs um, with lots of responsibility. And it's because they were raised with, with some sense of responsibility of helping if there's a storm, they take part yeah. in the family's well-being of, of we have to take things off, off the deck of the boat, we have to lower the sails, we have to close the, you know, the, the, the valves. They have responsibilities. They have responsibilities, and they were raised with responsibilities that affect the family unit. And that, I think, is the key, because there's some people who are like, well, give your child chores to do. And I'm like, okay, but do they understand why they're doing it? Like, I had chores as a kid, and I don't think I cared. Like, I did them because I had to do them. But it wasn't about, um, I don't know, it wasn't about moving the family forward. It wasn't about... Was there, like, would the family suffer grievously if you didn't do them? No. No. And maybe that's the difference. Holding laundry. Like, maybe. it has to be, like, this is important. Yeah. And it has to be done. And it might be a simple job. But it is an important job. And I think one thing that I know I haven't been as good about, and you're better at, and I think that's just a, that moms are less good at this, is allowing children to do more than you think they can, within reason. Yeah. Um, I would never hand the child a machete because it scares me. But that's just a mom thing. I, I did that, didn't I? And it just like every part of me was like, yeah, take it away. It is just a little machete. But, and that's something important because I am not good at that. I am terrible about that. The first time you let him mow the lawn years ago. Oh, yeah. Just like, oh, that's fine. It'll be fine. But it's terrifying to yeah. me. Um, and I really think that is. Uh, that's There's been lots of little terror of he's doing what? Yeah. Terrifying moment. But it's good for him. And he has mostly not injured himself. And this is all within the reason of like what is and is not possible for him to do safely and with you know rules and things and consequences um i think it's important there's a lot of people who think that he should not work as hard as he does i have gotten many comments about that um, so but i would like to see the people who say that their children in 10 years him in 10 years and compare the personalities yeah. and the successes of both. But I also think that what, now this gets into the homeschooling, um, not all children are the same. Just like not all adults are the same. And yet for some reason, people tend to lump all children together as they should all do these things. Well, if you told me I needed to go spend however many hours a day with 20 other people in a room i would go hide like i just ooh, no yeah because that's not who i am school i don't want that yeah um that's and people just don't look at that that the socialization thing what if your child does not actually want that what if so, they don't thrive in that well then it also turns into if you been in a classroom setting with small children the a bit of mob mentality takes over even thinking yep. um, otherwise thoughtful children yep. become suddenly mob we're gonna fight over mm -hmm. this dumb toy we're gonna thing we're gonna scream and run for no reason when they won't otherwise and perhaps a, a little bit about the 11 year old um then he he totally gave me a like I asked him, like, is there anything you don't want me to talk about? Like, he's old enough to make, make those decisions. He's like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> so he has been in many different situations in his education um, because life has changed a million times. He's been in daycare. He has been in school. Because he stayed home for a while. It's been it's been back and forth a lot of things as we've moved. He's been in a charter school, which was essentially a public school. It, it, it wasn't anything special. He's been in public school. We did that for a short time. And the public school was sort of the last the last straw. Uh, that was sort of the beginning of a lot of, of things that I didn't agree with in public school. But it was also just watching behavior. 
that was five years ago in Tennessee. Yeah. And his behavior was just I'm like, you're not, who are you? You come home and you're just, who are you? That's you true. are not the kid I know. And he was picking up bad behaviors and he was, he was bored. He was miserably and horribly bored. And bored children oh. are trouble. School has become, Across the board. in the U.S., um, the, the race to the bottom of lowest common denominator. Of the school can only teach what all the children can do and learn, which means everything has to be geared towards the least intelligent, least capable person. And that is now all that is taught. And they're getting rid of all of the advanced they used honors, to have, uh, AP, all those things. For gifted students, yeah. for those who are, are especially intelligent, no. None of those classes those, are They're anymore. being... Uh, they're actually, they're, yeah. they're not doing well. Yeah. It's, yeah, we could go on about the education systems, but. Um, <laughs> it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Uh, it's getting it's much worse. I, I, I saw a thing, someone was talking about, there were uh, two friends that enrolled in uh, the army. Um, and part of the enrollment is you have to give your, your diploma from high school um, as, as part of your, your thing. So there were two friends and um, one of them got a, a small sign-up bonus of a couple four thousand dollars or something. The other one was worried that they wouldn't get in because they had a homeschool diploma mm -hmm. and they got a ten thousand dollar bonus. Wow. It was much more and they, they originally thought that that was a problem that the I would have thought military would want them. It was actually valued higher. At what, at what point in time is this? Uh, this was like last year, two years okay. ago. Okay. Like pretty recent. Wow. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, and I just, as, as an odd data point. Yeah. But when I look at, we, we take the child out here, um, and we can compare against what uh, other kids are doing his age. He's learning a lot of things that a lot of children in the U.S. maybe won't ever learn to their detriment. There's a lot of things adults won't ever learn. <laughs> ever. <Just saying. laughs> um, and we used to say even even at a small age, at, at four or five years old, we could go to the grocery store and he can name every single fruit and vegetable. Interesting. <laughs> and then... And then he, he loved them, and he understood like why each one was good, how it was good cooked. He understood about nutrition, about which things were bad, and what about, oh, you want this candy bar? No, I don't want the candy. Like, okay, so he's starting to have, and, and he, he's very good about it now. Like, we could, we could let him loose into the wild, and he would understand <laughs> how to feed himself for optimal health mm -hmm. for the future. And there's a lot of subjects like that of, of practical daily life that are critical that are just unimportant. Mm. But you get to do that in, in a setting like ours. And you also get to do it practically. It is one thing to learn something on paper. Sure. It is completely different to learn it in real life. So, as of 11, he's 11 years old, um, if we put him on a different property, he'd be like, well, I have to find water. Here's how I set up the water system. Here's how I plumb it. Here's how I filter it. Here's how I do this and that. And I get it to my house. I have to build a house. Here's how I build a house. Here's how I secure the, the post of the ground, the thing. Here's how I, I have to think about the wind and the rain and the, you know, the soil types. And he could do that. He's like, well, then I have to eat and I have to go and, and, and find that. And he could do that. Um, and, and on and on and on and on and on by 11. Yeah. And they'll just be it. That, that's part of it. And people ask, well, is he homeschooled? And I'm like, well, he's sort of homeschooled, sort of unschooled, sort of online schooled, sort of life schooled. Yeah. And I think that that is probably a better, more realistic approach. I have a rather large pet peeve with people who homeschool now first of all i think it's great if you homeschool because i think that children should not be in the current public school system for lots and lots and lots and lots of reasons but i'm going to homeschool what curriculum do i buy so they can do it independently and so they don't have to do it okay 
I think that you just want to public school at home. Yes. And there's a difference between public school at home and homeschool. Very huge difference. It's a huge difference. Again, it's probably still better if you can have them at home. I'm not disagreeing with that. At home at all is better than indoc indoctrinated in public schools. If you don't understand why and what we're saying is, is shocking to you, like, well, why wouldn't I have them in school? Oh, boy. To be a fly on the wall... And if you were a ghost and you wandered through a modern public school and you simply walked into a classroom without being observed, without the teacher knowing you're there, and listen to what they say, how they say certain things, how they inflect it, how they reference it to other things, your child is being taught all sorts of things that have nothing to do with what's in the books. And it is absolutely one-sided and it is rampant. Yeah. Every, sometimes every little thing a teacher says has super negative attachments to certain, you know, things, certain yeah. things and and positive to other things and that might be totally opposite of what you uh, believe and then you wonder why your child goes off to college and comes back completely unrecognizable um yeah public school is a, to me is a very scary place it has become more scary. It was less scary when I went to school, which was longer. It was less ago. scary when I went to school. It is really rather recent that it has become. But that's, I guess that's only a part of it. I, I just think that I've gone through a lot of different approaches to teaching him. I went with these super strict, I'm going to make a schedule and we're going to do these things. And they're going to be like units. To, I tried the super strict right, right. because that's kind of what everyone presented at the time of like you should do this to mimic public school and i realized this is, this might work if we were sitting in a city in an apartment and we had nothing else to do yep. but at the time we were renovating a house building a homestead yeah moving to a different country yeah and then we were in a different country and then we did the whole thing again and that's it's life and we ended up really just doing a lot more life skills, which so far seem to be There's, winning for him so in we're, particular. We're reorganizing, reshuffling a bit of, of you know, in school there's, where we're going to teach social science and we're going to teach history and we're going to teach, stop trying to teach eight to 11 year olds history. First of all, stop trying to teach anybody history of just like the textbook history because, Look, well, listen, there's a whole bunch of questions about history. I love history. And the more I've learned about history, is most of it is not right. <laughs> um, and when you get really, really deep into a subject, and you can't do that with everything. You can do that on very narrow, yes. specific things. Um, and, and you wade through all of the best material. And even then, it, it, it's sort of, of, of clouded. But then you find out that what is presented on the simple level in the textbooks is simply wrong. And even if it wasn't wrong, Let's, even if it was right, it's like just the surface level of everything. If you think about most, I guess I'm thinking like science and history sure. in school. I don't remember getting in depth about a single thing. It was super broad surface level information that I remember very little of because it wasn't interesting. Because there wasn't a... There we, you, know, you have to memorize what dates a war was or some nonsense that does that matter is that important to memorize that to pass the test clearly not because i don't remember anything <laughs> not a one but i can read about history at a specific topic and become incredibly interested in it and dive into it and learn more and more yes. and more and more that's what the kid does he does. He he actually, yeah. he's learning the art of the deep dive. I know. And, and I don't think either of us necessarily taught him that. No. no, I no, did, no. I, that is self-inflicted. Inflicted. <laughs> um, he might have a tiny like bit of my how, OCD about subjects. How many pages wow. was the turtle book? I just, 300? 400 and some nonsense about um, turtle tortoises and terrapins. Turtles, tortoises, and terrapins. And he has, he's gone to bed and he's read so many pages every night until he falls asleep. And then he keeps going, keeps going. And he, he read the whole thing. And, and he spent a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he can tell us all about it and their mating habits and their thing and their something and the differences and the. Oh, my goodness. 
I didn't even know there was a terrapin. I, didn't either. I still don't think I know what it is. And he does this every so often, and he'll just pick a thing, and then he'll just fixate, and then just just deep dive, and and learn a subject um, to for an eleven year old, very high level. And this was not a kid's book at all. No, that's the other thing. Um, as a sort of side note, I, I I've talked to people who are are moving kids here. Yeah. The one thing that maybe I didn't fully comprehend or think about is the fact that there are no books here in English. It seems very obvious, but my brain and all the other things that you're thinking about when you're moving to a different country, did you think the kid's not going to have anything to read? No. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to have anything to read. Nobody was. We tried We tried some apps. Oh, we tried. And they're, they're expensive. They're garbage. garbage. They only have kids' books. They're And only what they want to show you uh, as kid books. Which... Back to the indoctrination nonsense. Uh, pull off. So we found online libraries with downloadable books. There, there, you, you wrote a Substack on that? Yeah, the, I only wrote it about the first one we found. Mm, um, it was Anna's Archive, and then there's Z Library. Anna's Archive, if I'm remembering correctly, has more, but it is a very convoluted right. system. You can't. I could never figure out how to... You had to search by name of book. Or author, so you couldn't just browse, which is really difficult if you're just trying to find... Books but Z Library, you could browse by subject, by keyword. I just typed by... in turtles because he wanted to know about turtles. And just page and page and page and download them. I send them to him and he reads them yeah. on his iPad. And, the, and it's just the world at your fingertips of, of everything. Everything. Millions and millions of books, um, which for us is, is a, you know, a godsend. Yeah. So we can. We go through that. Um, highly recommend And then there's the YouTube, which YouTube has you know, flaws. Um, he does not have unfettered access because the YouTube is, is questionable at times. Things, things you didn't even know you need to worry about. <laughs> All you have to do is look on the, the, the uh, like hot or trending pages. Oh, my God. And then you realize why you shouldn't let your child simply surf the YouTube. Ah! But <laughs> at the kitchen table <laughs> with the volume up. It's too quiet for too long. He doesn't have headphones. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> he decided to figure out how to build a flute. Oh my gosh, the flute. And I'm, I'm like, I'm editing we're videos. Just, we're doing stuff. We're busy. Stuff. He's messing and around. he's like, oh, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do this thing. Sure, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> sure, whatever. And sometimes, you know, he'll start a project, not finish it. He'll move on and things and stuff. Whatever. We were clearing land yes. for the cacao. And he, we cut down some, some weeds and trees, and he goes, oh, this is the kind of wood that, like, you would make a flute out of. And I'm like... It was like, it looks like tiny bamboo. Yeah, and he's like, oh, oh I saw a video on it. Isn't that like... Okay, sure. He tells us lots of things. Trust me, you can't listen to all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, okay, sure. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, one day, he's cutting it up, and he's, he's like, measuring lengths of, like... And he learns like all little details of how to sand it and the right like little curve to make it sound. And, the and then he's like stitches it together with it, and he's made himself a little a uh, little pamphlet. Little pamphlet. Just you just like okay. I did not teach you that. <laughs> nope. I did not know how to do that. <laughs> no idea. But he figured it out via the internet and was able to follow the instructions, the tutorial, the the. All of the details. He, he now has uh, obtained some blocks of wood and he's trying to, to carve himself an actual full flute. Oh, which is a big multi piece extravaganza. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and these are things that you, you aren't going to be able to do if you're in traditional school for gosh, however many hours they are now. Yeah, no. And again, um, it goes to the lowest common denominator. Your child will only be taught as much as the dumbest kid in the class can, can absorb. But there's also no personal interest involved. There's no, you're not going to learn how to make a plan, pan flute because if that's not on the curriculum, you're not going to do it. No. You, no. You're just not. I had one teacher in one year of school, sixth grade, Mr. Ficus? Ficus? I don't remember. Um, actually had a wonderful project that he got the entire class into. It was Project City. Oh, you told me about that. And he starts out and he just puts a big table in the back of the room. Table there. That's different. Okay. <laughs> the next day, there's paper wrapped around the table. Big piece of paper. What's do with the table? Oh, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> now we're all interested. And then he starts drawing lines all over this piece of paper. Like, what do you do with the paper? He's like, don't touch the, don't touch the paper. <laughs> Wouldn't tell us. There's no better way to get kids interested. And he keeps doing more and more and more. He's drawing this big city. It kind of looked like London, I guess. Uh, with rivers and roads and things. Um, and then he drew a grid all over it. <laughs> you know, and finally he tells us Project City. Now, with Project City, he's going to teach us uh, a bunch of concepts and how they interact and the connections. This is one of the few times I've had a good teacher. Um, and actually, strangely enough, this was the inspiration for when... Um, and I might actually still be listed as on the board of directors of a school in Pakistan. Such a friend. So random. Um, so I random. might. I might be. <laughs> I don't know. But but everything is connected and interacting, and you learn by doing. So the city was gorgeous, and that you're going to build buildings. You're going to learn paper craft, how to fold paper. It can only be one piece of paper. Can't tape it. Okay. You're going to buy land we're going to learn the whole process of, of buying real estate and what's involved with that okay you're going to then assemble buildings um there's costs associated with with building floors with building the ground level you get to charge rent based upon you know certain things where it is in the city uh, so you have to like balance your land value versus what you could get for it um, and the tall, skinny buildings it just made more rent because you, you had the, the smaller land cost. So now we're learning mathematics and formulas and things, and we were all very excited to do so. Yes. And we enjoyed it. And you probably learned more from that than you would have. I remember it. You remember it. I am now 50 years old. And you remember how they, all of those, those concepts intertwine, which isn't taught. Typically, it is very like when you go to math class or you go to science class or you go to, and they don't they don't interact. You don't have real world applications for anything. Right. And that I remember that the only math I could learn. I am not a math person, but the only math I could learn was geometry because at least I could apply it to a shape to something that seemed real. Yeah. And that's the <laughs> that's the only thing I could remember and understand. So I think the application of those sort of traditional education standards to real life are yes. incredibly important. And they, they stick better. And that was the thought behind this entire school that we wanted to put together. It was supposed to be a business school, um, but you would learn by doing. You're going to take a trip to the forest. Oh, we're going to learn about the trees, about the, the, the biology of trees. We're going to learn about the business of cutting down said trees, of what you can do with it. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn about the, uh, the environment. What is the, the pros and cons of doing such an action? What about getting there? What about transportation? What about the weather that affects the trees? Let's learn about uh, climatology. Let's learn about... Yeah. And everything connects. And once you understand the connections, you can more correctly grasp the subject. So we can... Um, we can sort of do that with what we're doing here. We have Project House. I mean, I don't, I don't know any 11-year-old who understands as much about physics as he does. He understands more than I do half the time. And he's all excited about it, and it's interesting. And, and you sat and you did all the, the mathematics for, for the, uh, the roof. He asked the question, and he goes, will the roof blow off? Hmm? Now, this is a, a natural-built house. There's, there's, there's a single sheet of... of drawing and i looked at it and i'm like well i'm, I'm just sort of building it to be okay <laughs> maybe that's we, a good question maybe we should put it on paper and figure it out so i said well let's calculate it let's look at the loading let's look at the strengths of all the parts mm. let's find the weakest link and we identified a few places that we could make some small improvements that would then increase some some weak points so that the house could take a straight-on 80-mile-an-hour wind. Um, You're actually going to do a whole video about it. I'm going to do a video about it. <laughs> so that it, it could take an 80-mile-an-hour wind, not fail, for a little shanty house built of mud and sticks in the jungle. And I don't know any other child who has ever even thought about that. Yeah. And those are the kind of things that I, I think that even if you do... Um, curriculum-based homeschooling. You're just missing that. You're, you, well, you have to be an interesting enough person 
to be able to teach these things and not everybody is you also have to live a life where there are those things naturally where mm. there there is challenges where yeah. there is the need to accomplish things or to to learn how to build a house or to sure i mean he takes care of all of the animals more or less and yeah. is he perfect daddy no he's 11 there is still plenty of learning to do and responsibility but the responsibility is something that i don't think is considered enough in raising a child honestly yeah mm-hmm. responsibility for themselves for the things that are their jobs for just just everything being part of a team yeah we are a team here we are if and if something has to get done then then we suffer it didn't is, get done or an animal suffers this is part of it. i actually wrote about this um, on my sub stack that he is part of our our team right and we've we've had many conversations of if if you are not willing to do this job we have to reassess like what we can do here right there are jobs nobody likes to do obviously he tends to complain more because he's 11 that's fair sure. it, so if you don't want to do that job then we might not be able to have that animal because we all need to work together then we need to scale back to what we can accomplish without you like we would have to get rid of the ducks or the goats or the thing or, or like something them. else because then i'd have to take care of it and it's yeah. just a, an understanding that we are a team here and we are all important and, and i i think that that is perhaps sort of the key to some people are like well how do you have time to like teach the child, raise the child, do things and everything else. Like he's, he's part of it. He's not separate from it. Stop thinking of it as stop what you're doing and sit and teach a completely unrelated thing. And That's what people a, think of as a little, I'm going to have a curriculum. And there's a little bit of that. Like, do I have to stop and like, do, we need to get more into of, mathematics. Um, but I think applying them to life yes. is a simple, like it's just a better way for his brain to absorb the information. Sure. There's only so much sitting a child can do. There's also plenty of studies about how, especially boys, just biologically, psychologically cannot sit and study something. I mean, I always, I don't remember being like right. spastic. He has so much energy, so much going on in his brain to sit for hours is unproductive. He, he is a high energy individual. So if he can learn in small segments as he's physically using his body it just absorbs into his brain so much better yep if he could run and learn he would learn yeah. better and it used to be that that was known that like you know you sit kids in class and they fidget and they think and they something and that was considered normal because they it's not natural to sit in a classroom for eight hours and now they just say well your child has add and they need to be medicated so that they can sit is- and stare mindlessly at these yeah. boring basic subjects with cutesy little colorful graphics that have no meaning they, they mean nothing there's no reason to learn that thing yeah. so whenever there's a reason to learn the thing in a classroom of other kids that are also distracted and bored and yeah. uninterested yeah both the, the what is it the set and setting are both garbage yeah. well now that we've thoroughly trashed the u.s the um, academic system. <clears throat> yeah, well, no apologies. Not, not a single one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think that should necessarily be controversial anymore, but I'm sure it is to some people. Um, as far as like homeschooling, because I know people have also asked. Well, now you're just happy to have your kid home, come home from school and not get beat up no. by another yeah. kid or That's something. Ridiculous. Uh, as part of the homeschooling conversation. Um, people have asked, you know, what realities here. Yes. Um, which I feel like we should touch on before someone's like, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't actually know the legalities here. I know that school is, I don't know. School is mandatory, right? I think it's mandatory up to a certain age. Um, and while I say that it's mandatory, I can it's easily mandatory. tell you that that is a not. It's very loose well-followed rule um a lot of times uh there, there's a lot of areas where you just see kids that just don't go to school or they're, they're working with their parents um you watch the guy who pushes a, a cart selling lemonade 
and he's got his thing, his lemon press and his stuff, he's got a whole cart, and then you look, and in the bottom shelf of, like, this bicycle-wheeled cart is a sleeping child. Although most of them are younger than we'd be in school anyway. Six, seven, eight, like... Yeah. Uh, what... Common. Uh, one of the ways... Because as a foreigner moving to a different country, there's a little bit of a... Honestly, there's a little bit of a limbo. Weird. We're in a weird situation as far as, like... We're neither schooling. fish nor fowl, as <laughs> they say. We are. Yeah, because we are not citizens. We are permanent residents of Ecuador. We are also still citizens of the U.S. Because to denounce that is just like but difficult. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they made it more difficult because too many people were doing it. Whatever. Um, so there's, it's just a little bit of an oddball. Now there is a school. There is an online school, uh, the farm school. <laughs> Always. I found that because in Tennessee, when I went to homeschool him, I thought I could homeschool him. I was told I could not homeschool him because I did not have an appropriate diploma. That's right. Because I was homeschooled you for my last have, school of hi, or my last year of high school. You can't have two generations of homeschool. You have to break it up. I was so furious with. An indoctrinated generation I then was a homeschool. So fierce. Like, well, you could just go get a GED. Just go get a GED. I don't need one. I think it I am legally So I was frantic. This was like we had made this decision kinda of like I was frantic. I'm like, well, what do I do? He has to be legally somewhere in Tennessee. He had to be legally yeah. enrolled in a school. And I couldn't homeschool him. So I ended up finding the farm school. Uh, I will link it. It is um, it is based in Tennessee. They have a physical campus, but you are also, they basically created it as a way around some of the very strict and kind of, well, they're arbitrary homeschool rules. Yeah. Uh, you can be anywhere worldwide and enroll your child. The way it works is you are not a homeschooler. You are a... You are a teacher of the school, if that makes sense. Yeah, Does that make sense? Parent educator. No, you, you are not a parent educator. No. You are um, a satellite teacher, I think is the way they phrase okay. it. So you are a, you are a classroom. Um, that is just a legal way that they set it up. Yeah. And it works really well. It takes care of your attendance. Um, you Literally, all you have to do is go put in the kids' attendance in grades, which can be whatever you choose them to be. And that means that there is a legal paperwork for your kid. At some point in the future, they want to go to college. They want to get a Supposed job. They, they're something. like, oh, it's not a gap. In um, Someday they want to homeschool their own child. Sure. They would have a proper, they can also get a proper diploma at the end of high school. Whenever the end of high school is, because it could be when they're 15 if they choose to. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that has been just an awesome sort of workaround. Right. Which I guess I just wanted to share because I know there are people who are thinking about it. Um, no, it, it's a solid option. Yeah. I'm going to check the camera. Ah, sorry if the video shakes a bit. It's <laughs> not the most professional grade stand. <laughs> if you could see it, you would laugh. Um, but it, it holds up the phone. <laughs> it suffices. Yeah. So that's... That's just our perspective. That's our perspective. Um, and I I think it's for the best. And I, I watch... I watch other kids in other places, and I, and I watch them going, being put through the grinder of, of um, the American education system. And my son, who tells me about his not pleasant experiences, not educational... He lived with me uh, before we, we moved here, and I taught him certain things. Um, I taught him long division, certain mathematical things. You know, we got his reading up from five words per page of super children books into actual novels. And then all of a sudden I talked to him, you know, we're talking about school three years later. And he's actually being taught less than what I had already taught him that he knew to mastery over three years ago why have you gone backwards not even the same backwards yeah and it's you got stuck in the grinder of, of, uh, of special education which is even worse they don't care about 
you're actually learning anything. At that point, it is simply dealing with you as a human in a classroom that they have to take care of. Education is absolutely second, third, fourth. And they don't even do a good job of anything. It's, it's a... He had a good teacher in Tennessee Yep. Um, when he was in school there. Um, he, Unfortunately. He got caught up a year, year and a half while he was there. Unfortunately, that was also the, the COVID time, which just blew up everybody's education. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, the remote schooling, that, that didn't work for anybody. And no. the data's come out. Um, uh, it's terrible. It's terrible psychologically. It, it's terrible uh, educationally. It was terrible. For families. Because. Yeah. 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 We all know it was terrible. Lot but I think it did open eyes about what is happening in schools. Because parents, and even the tiny bit that teachers were saying knowing that parents could hear it was still bad enough where I know a lot of parents went, wait, what is and, happening? Yeah, teachers toned it way down because they knew that their voices could be overheard in, the, in yeah. people's houses. They couldn't get it all the way down to what would be considered a reasonable like viewpoint. They were still highly indoctrinating, opinionating all over the place. Yeah. And that was the you know, the, the, the cleaned version of what they do. And there's a huge spike in homeschooling after that. It's like, And you can't go to a school and, like, there's some schools that they won't even allow you in the classrooms. They won't let you see the curriculum. And it, Yeah, you're not allowed to see the curriculum. You're not allowed to know. And, and there's a lot of places now you are not allowed to object. If you have a religious uh, uh, preference where, say, you don't want to learn about a certain subject, it is against your religion to do so, which is a critical part of your life. There are many now cases that, that have gone across the world. You are un, you're not allowed to even have your child absent that day. They won't tell you. You can't. They must be indoctrinated to things that are contrary to your beliefs. And I just... It's a strange world. So, if we take this all back to... So living in a jungle in the mountains of Ecuador. If we take this back to... Which kind of goes along to, along with her last video, like you said. Should you pull up the roots of your child or children? Move them to wherever you think is right? Sure. The answer is yes. If you, as an educated, intelligent adult and parent, think that somewhere else is going to be better for you, for your children, for their children... Then yes, you what should. What was it the, the 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 Native Americans? There was the phrase of, of they they any major decision they would think forward like like seven generations or something of would this be good for our people for like a long term future? Mm -hmm. And there were, were some um, some Native American people that, that would mm -hmm. have this thought. Think about that. And there's a lot of people that are just barely holding on. Well, well, it's just okay now, but if it gets any worse. I'll definitely leave. And they've been saying that year after well, year after year. They're also, uh, they also think that it may be detrimental to a child to move them, especially if you're talking about to a different country, somewhere very off grid, far away, all of those things. Well, will they have internet? Will they have this? Will they? Okay, so first of all, you can solve most of those things. We have internet, obviously. Um, you could also not. And there are times where I, Consider just turning ours off. Because I think that we were better before we had it. There is. Completely honestly. There is. Uh, it was recently in the news. Um, the, one of the least contacted Amazonian tribes. Um, was it Peru? Ecuador? It was Ecuador, I think. Was it Ecuador? I anyway, think so. they lived sure. way out. It's like 12 hours of walking and boat ride to get there. And they put out a, a, a thing. They asked to be... Um, gifted because they, they didn't have a lot of money as a people because of lack of commerce uh, Starlink internet and some very nice people thought okay there's some lady in Texas I think um, and they got money together and they gifted them a bunch of Starlink units for their tribe and solar panels to run them out of complete like goodwill like sure leaders. that did not end well it is ongoing um, however what the elders of the tribe have found of People there needed to, to work 
to feed themselves. And if you don't work, you don't eat. That's just how that is. They found that the youth spent so much time just sitting watching silly videos on the internet um, and doing some other stuff that their their entire way of life was, was sort of crashing. Stuff wasn't getting done. They were having huge problems. Um, they were seeing all sorts of degeneracy, of, of watching porn. Of they they realized it simply giving um, little devices to people that they could just sit there on the internet was it was a terrible idea. So they have now, which is literally what has happened to all of the people in the modern world. They it have was now just restricted it <sighs> to I think Sundays and only a few hours the rest of the days of the week. Otherwise, it's turned off because of the problems it was causing society. Now, you can't do that with society at large. You can do it when you're the, the tribe leader of a small group. But then you're like, wait a second. And then you look at the schools that are in, say, Los Altos or Palo Alto, who are teaching to all the, the children who are the heads of all these companies. You know, they don't have computers in some of them. They don't have iPads. They don't have phones. They don't allow their children to have iPads or phones. I think it was um, even like the, the people out of Apple. No. Like, you invented the iPad. Why don't your children have them? We won't let them. That's terrible for them. This yeah. is not uncommon. This is not like a few cases. They, they understand the, the, the danger of, of what's happening to society with the little screens. Um, and a lot of the, you know, you get into YouTube. What is YouTube? Well... And there's benefits to all of it. There, but there can also be such detriment, <sighs> especially for the children's brains. It, it, you can learn things from YouTube. You can you can research subjects, um, but it, mostly it's turned into mindless, yeah, uh, entertainment. Poor entertainment. Poor entertainment. <laughs> but there um, is some that's really good. There is. I, mean, I heard good. of this channel from these people in Ecuador. <laughs> we try to be entertaining, but also n not mindless mostly. <laughs> So there's, and it's not, it doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't have to be zero, and it doesn't have to be all day, every day. Right. Which, when you are in charge of it, you, you can be in charge of it. It's but, pretty simple. But being in charge of it has benefits. Being in charge, yeah. let's talk about another thing of being in charge, that you, you, may, you may have something to say on this subject. Oh, no. Being in, charge, like being in charge of <laughs> what your child wants to eat. Oh, yeah. So we get so many people like, oh, well, my, my kid won't eat that. They're picky. They, they won't eat this food or this food or this spice or this thing. And I look at them. I've never had this problem once. That is not your child's <laughs> failing. That is yours. Yeah, don't blame the kid. He sings praises to you for what you make for dinner. Of yeah. food, healthy food, vegetable things, stuff. Um, all the flavors, all of the spices. There's and he nothing has, that he won't eat. Right. But in America, children are raised on baby food. It's bland. It's tasteless. It comes in a bottle. It's it has smooth. no seasoning. So guess what? They get used to no seasoning. You put somebody else in charge of what your child thinks is good food. Either they, don't, they get used to not having it, or they always hate food because it doesn't taste good. And that is my theory. That's also true. My little brother, um, for years, when it, you just well, he won't eat that. You won't eat this. And he would throw fits. My mom would make him something different. And then that turned into, we'll only eat bland food. He'll only eat spaghetti without sauce. What? He'll only eat macaroni and cheese. He'll only eat, you know, um, <laughs> fish sticks. What? Like, that's all he'll eat. Why did you have to make him that? No, you don't. Make him eat regular food. And I, we got into fights. Like, me and my mom, like, you are... I hate to say it, but you're doing it wrong. I love my mother to death. But I very much feel that that was a huge mistake. And my little brother spent very many years being scrawny, weak, and not correctly developed. Also still picky. Did he grow out of the picky? I don't know. <sighs> See, I, don't, I think, if you, think if you do that in the beginning, they never really... He was not getting proper flavor. nutrition for many years. Oh, man, because he was allowed to be picky. Versus if you raise a child... On whatever food, I, I remember my, my friend from Pakistan, and we would go to his house, and, and his wife would make food, and it was so spicy, <laughs> my nose sweat. <laughs> my whole body would just, like, an hour later, 
so hot, so spicy. The children, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. They're just eating it. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to die. That's how they grew up. And, and of course, they love spicy food. They eat everything. Yeah. They don't have the, the problems like that. And we could do multiple videos on that. You know how I feel about that. You don't get me started. If your child is picky on what they eat, that is not the child. That's the dog. That's the dog. Toby, no. <laughs> yep. Basically, being more removed from American Western society, whether you move to a different country or you just move very rural and are independent of those sort of society pressures, is going to benefit your ch your child children, pluralized yeah. or not. <laughs> it just will, and and I don't think there's any I don't think there's any gray area there. I think it's just better. And is there going to be an adjustment period? Yes. Is there, are they going to fight you on it quite? The possibly. earlier you start, the better. Yeah. Now that being said, I would not have wanted to do our move to Ecuador with a child any younger. Okay. What was his first foods that he ate? Oh, like first, first? Yeah. Uh, pickle. Pickle. Um, curry. Curry. Literally. <laughs> um, spaghetti. Like root sure. proper, like spaghetti, spaghetti. Yeah. Um, I don't know, whatever else I ate. Whatever you were eating. I just... And that right there is a controversial conversation. Yeah. But like, what? He's, you're not feeding threw him. threw it at him and he just smushed it in his face mostly. And he's also happy. Yeah. And he's strong and he's healthy and he's happy and he loves everything. all the flavors of, of everything in the world of every cuisine. I remember the first time he was, God, he was like a year and a half maybe. And he dipped his apple in sweet chili sauce. And I'm like, the heck, child? You just mentioned away happy and I tried it. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty good. <laughs> He's always had all of the, the flavors and the things. Yeah. Yeah. That could be its own topic. Yeah, that could be its own topic. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We have babbled on long enough. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was entertaining. I hope it was uh, uh, inspirational. Thought, inspirational of thought. Um, Thank you for watching. Hope to see you for the next one.